During a race, when one car is trying to overtake another, you'll often hear commentators say two things which might sound contradictory. The first is, if car A can get close enough to the car B in front, they can get into the slipstream and boost past. The second is, car B is too close to car A and stuck in their dirty air, slowing them down. So which is it? Do you want to be close to the car in front and get into the slipstream? Or will getting too close just slow you down? The answer is both, and it's not a contradiction. To understand, we first need to understand some simple fundamentals of downforce and aerodynamics. The downforce generating parts of the car, mainly the wings, function to push the car into the ground. The more a car is pushed into the ground, the more the car can grip the track and the faster it can speed through corners. If a car doesn't have decent grip, you'll see it understeering, that's not turning into the corner properly and running wide, or oversteering, that's sliding around at the back or fishtailing as the rear wheels spin without the grip to grab the road. Downforce is good, but it comes at a cost, and that cost is drag. In the simplest of terms, think of it like this. If the car is rushing through the air at 200 miles an hour, it's going to be drag you backwards. You can use the surface of your wings to get that wind to push your car down, but the more you expose the wing to the air, the more you're going to get dragged backwards. That is, slowed down. The wings are literally massive air brakes, like a parachute on a dragster. At high speeds, just taking your foot off the accelerator will have a massive braking effect through the drag of the wings alone. So essentially downforce is great for going through corners quickly, but the drag you get can be terrible for getting some decent top speeds on the straights. That's why setup is so important. Now we've got a basic idea of the aerodynamics of the car. That's how the car is shaped to car through the air through which it's travelling. Let's have a look at the slipstreaming and then dirty air. As we just mentioned, travelling at high speeds through the air causes drag. At the kind of speeds racing cars and aeroplanes travel, the air is coming so fast and heavy that it operates more like a thick soup, incredibly hard to push through. The wings and bodywork are forcing the air up and away from the car as it drives, and this leaves a big hole in the wake of the car. Driving close in the wake of a speeding F1 car, there is very little air at all, as the shape of the car has worked to push the air up and away. That means if you're chasing a car and you get into that hole, the slipstream, you suddenly have a lot less drag on your own car. Your top speed and acceleration is a lot higher because you don't have the drag of that 200 mile an hour wind pushing back against you. You're literally in thinner air and have a real speed advantage over the car in front. That's why chasing cars tuck up right behind the car in front until the last minute, grabbing all the extra acceleration they can before darting past at the last minute with a top speed advantage. So what about dirty air then? What is the supposed downside to following closely to the car in front? Well, dirty air is the flip side of the aerodynamic coin. Just as slipstreaming negated a lot of the drag suffered from travelling in fast-moving air, dirty air comes into play in the corners. It ruins a lot of the downforce effect that the aerodynamics are trying to capture. So the aerodynamics of a racing car are mostly designed and tested for cars moving through a fairly homogeneous airstream. That is, a solid, undisturbed, predictable wind. The air thrown up behind a Formula 1 car has been severely disturbed by all the aerodynamic shapes it passes over. The wings and bodywork throw the air into all directions, causing vortices, ripples and all manner of disturbances. The air does quickly settle, but if you're racing in the wake of all that mess, your wings are unable to get the downforce they need and can't corner as quickly. Even if you're in a nice empty slipstream, you're still getting no downforce. So hello understeer. How does this affect overtaking? Most overtaking happens on straights because that's the best chance you're going to get to build up some speed over the car in front. In order to do that, you need to come out of the corner before a straight at least as fast as the car ahead. Unfortunately, if you're following the car closely and travelling in its dirty, disturbed air, you'll have all that rubbish downforce and won't be able to corner as quickly. By the time you get to the straight, your overtaking opportunity is ruined because you're already going much slower. This is why DRS was brought in. It was a bit of a band-aid fix to the dirty air problem. Chasing cars were overly disadvantaged by dirty air, so they'd be allowed to flatten their rear wings and cut out some of the drag to compensate. That's the long and the short of it, really. A concise summary would be this. Slipstreaming reduces drag for the car directly behind, giving them a speed advantage on the straights. Dirty air reduces downforce from the car behind, giving them a speed disadvantage to the corners.